Hey, what's up? It's Deanna. So today we're going to look at old, antique, Victorian, and early 20th century ladies' purses. And uh, I even have photos of one of the owners. But let's get started. So what are these? These are very old ladies' um, purses, also known as uh, reticules. <laughs> I used to call them reticules, but uh, it's pronounced reticules. And uh, that's a, a, a bad word for a New Yorker to have to uh, try to pronounce since I have a terrible accent. But uh, here we go. Here's some uh, ladies' purses that are beaded mostly. Some of them are even made with stainless uh, steel or silver. These are uh, silver purses. Here's an example of one that's tarnished that I have to uh, actually um, try to clean somehow, which is very hard. These are like a mesh, wire mesh chain mail purse. And it's called chain mail. And you see thousands of chains going throughout it. And this was uh, made out of sterling silver. And uh, again, it really needs to be cleaned somehow. Very, very hard to do such a thing on an old purse like this. So let's uh, take a look at the history of some of these purses. And uh, as you can see, they have teeny tiny thousands of little micro beads. And uh, this one has tiny, tiny little beads. But um, all of them are very, very pretty. Now these particular ones are drawer, uh, drawstring purses, except for this one has a frame. And this one was probably made in the 1890s to so the early 1900s. This almost has an Art Nouveau meets Deco, like Art Deco type of look to it. Very, very interesting. And um, so basically, uh, beaded bags from the middle of the 19th century were almost made up of very small, tiny micro beads, which were could be as much as a thousand per inch. So you can tell the older beads uh, from the mid or, uh, well, actually the 1850s or before, because they have the tiniest, tiniest little micro beads of wool. Um, these ones are probably older than that. As you can see the beads, like if I was to put my finger in a one inch, there's not thousands. So the older the bag, usually the smaller the beads. And uh, you can see here, look how tiny these beads are. No, there's not a thousand per square inch. So I'm guessing that this is probably some of these purses are from the 1880s up into about 1915 or so. Very, very interesting. And okay, so um, basically uh, in the late 19th century, the women's beaded purses became um, very popular and almost like uh, it's similar to ladies' night, ba uh, night bags of today, like evening bags. So if you were to go to a wedding, usually like even in today's day and age, you would get like a pretty fancy beaded bag for evening wear. But uh, this was uh, women's wear for almost every day of the week. And um, by the early 20th century, beaded bags became even more popular, um, including Native American style beaded bags. And a lot of them were made by Iroquois Indians, which is quite interesting. Um, usually you'd find bags like this on reservations, um, especially where they were French missionaries. Um, a lot of these type of uh, beaded bags would be sold to the public. So the Indian ladies and... Uh, people on the reservation could make a little extra money. So this one is made out of probably like a doe skin or buckskin. And you can see it's a very, very, very soft and supple leather. And it uh, has pretty, pretty beaded uh, designs all throughout the pouch. And, and a lot of these are also considered pouches. So um, this one, again, has these pretty handles made out of like a, a fine silk rope that was weaved. And then the top of this is really interesting. It's almost origami folded. So to open it, you'd have to hold the little, you'd, you'd have to open the little folds on it and uh, then pull the string. And this is almost known as a puzzle bag. It was very, very hard to get this open, as you can see here. Um, and that was uh, actually meant to help ladies against uh, pickpockets. So a pickpocket would have a hard time of getting this purse open since there's so many intricate little, um, you know, like folds on it. Um, it's even hard for me to get it open. And then we have this other spot in the front that's a little snap and a lady could put something in there. And uh, I'm feeling around, is there any coins in there? The answer is no. Imagine I found an old coin. Now this one was probably made about um, the early 20th century, probably about 1900 to about 1906 or so. Um, let's check out the back of it. And again, we have this uh, cool um, origami, almost like puzzle design. Really, really pretty. And uh, it's like a drawstring bag. And uh, yeah, so these things are very, very, very fragile. Um, these beads, if one string goes, forget it. Thousands of beads will fall off this purse. 
and just go everywhere and spill everywhere. So the problem is with these uh, purses, here's an example of uh, such a one. Um, if I pick it up, all the beads fall off of it. Um, once you get a break in the string, as right there, boom, the purse is like pretty much gone. Um, I actually saved a bunch of the beads for this old purse. This again was probably made in the 1890s to the early 1900s. And as you can see here, we're losing beads. And uh, these had to be really kept in tissue paper, acid-free tissue paper, away from the elements. Um, you shouldn't even take them out too much and handle them because you'll get you'll spring a leak and the beads will go everywhere. So this has a beautiful frame, as you can see here. And I'm only holding it with one hand and filming with the other, so I'm not going to even try to open it. But uh, it would have a, a little loop on the top. And these were also known as ladies' dance purses. So she would go to a, a dance and swing it around. And these became popular in the 20s, these beaded purses. Um, so a flapper lady could swing them around and, uh, you know, show off her dance moves. So um, these two purses were um, actually the same woman's purse. Um, I have a prop provenance, they call it provenance, with it. And in this picture, I'm unsure who the lady is. Um, I guess these are with her friends over here. This looks about the early 20th century by the way the dresses are, probably about 1900 or so. And here she is here. And I'm not sure which lady in that picture with the group is, um, it is. Does anyone know? I, I, I can't tell. And here she is again. And this looks like probably the 1890s to about 1900, this picture. And look at that cool hat she's wearing and that dress, really, really cool. And this was um, also her brooch, I believe or a little um, belt, uh, this would actually, like a loop would slide through this and a lady would place like a ribbon around her waist with a pretty ornate little pin or some kind of um, little thing like this and it would go in the center of her waist. So uh, this was hers as well, along with her beaded purses. And these are from different eras, you know, different decades. You see this one has uh, hanging beads and uh, again, a drawstring and this is knitted. So most of the reticules uh, were knitted drawstring purses. Very, very interesting. So between 1820 and 1830, beaded bags or purses or pouches supported by a metal frame came into vogue primarily from uh, countries such as France and Austria. Even Empress um, Josephine, Empress Josephine of France um, had bags like these. Um, these went back all the way to the Regency era um, and all the way again into the 20th century. So here's another uh, fine example. Now, some of these beads were also made in Bohemia or Ch what we know as Czechoslovakia or the Czech Republic. And uh, this one is quite pretty with silk drawstrings. And I'm trying to pick it up to show you. Look how pretty that is, right? Okay, then we have another style right here. Again, this is probably um, Austrian beads or Bohemian. And I'm unsure about the age on this one. Again, this is uh, made out of knit material with drawstring and thousands and thousands of micro glass beads. And these are very, very tiny. You can see next to my finger. And if one string goes, the whole bag pretty much goes, which is uh, quite sad. So, and this one's actually heavy. From the glass beads, the weight of the glass actually bogs down the purse. So then we have another one. This is an early 20th century, all the way up into about 1918, 1920 or so. Um, I don't know the exact date, but um, a lot of uh, companies in America, such as Whiting and Davis, made purses like this. And this is made out of, this is a chain mail. Again, we have little chain links and we have little, um, little balls that dangle from the bottom. This was uh, made with uh, stainless steel, um, silver plated or silver. And I believe this one to be silver. And we see um, the drawstring has a little finger loop right here. And a lady would place her finger in here and uh, dangle this purse. Um, and you see uh, how wonderful this is. Now, too bad I can't uh, polish it. Um, if I polished it, it would shine like a new penny. And here we go. Here's all the little dangly little balls. Um, this was ki uh, quite fancy at the time. And it has a little finger ring. Very, very cool. Um, here we go. So we have another one here with uh, all beads, I think I even showed you this, but we see these micro beads and uh, with a silken drawstring. Let me try to hold it up. And the lighting is not very good in here right now. Look at that, really, really cool. Probably again, made in Austria, France, Czech Czechoslovakia, known as Bohemia at the time. 
This one is really a cool one. Now, um, this one is made out of silk. This one's probably older. This probably, um, it was made somewhere probably in the 1880s, um, maybe even earlier in the 1870s. And we see this beautiful silk um, drawstring, and it's covered in seashells, little, 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 pretty shiny seashells with silk material. And this is probably very, very, actually, I'm trying to pick it up, is very, very uh, fragile. Um, silk um, actually is not a strong material, even though it is one of the strongest materials in the world. Um, over time, though, it does something called melting, and uh, it frays, and then it actually disappears. It just does what I told you, it melts. <laughs> so this bag um, has to be kept in a, a lightless area where no UV lights can come through. Um, like the sunlight from the window, which could destroy it and also destroy the color. And it has to be kept in acid-free paper at all times. Um, eventually, this will break down and uh, get destroyed and disintegrate. All right, so we had our Iroquois beaded purse here. Now we have this one, which is really, really co uh, cool. Probably made in Austria or France. And we have these um, iridescent black shiny beads with different colors going through it. And on the drawstring... On the top, we have these little rings that uh, pull, when you pull the bag shut, it goes through the rings. And this one was probably made in the 1870s, 1880s. And uh, what's really cool about it is these Chinese pits. So um, we have these little danglies and these were pits. I, I forgot what kind of pits these were, maybe olive pits. And uh, they were decorated by a chi um, in China and sold as part of, you know, the makeup of these bags. And I don't know if you can see the carving. Let's zoom in on that. And let's check it out. So you see little seams. Look at that. You see little, little, little tiny seams. I'm trying to really get a good focus on that. And uh, these were like amazing. Now these pits or um, these little carvings sell uh, separately uh, for quite a bit of money. People look for these little Chinese carvings. Um, and uh, if this was off the bag, I can actually sell these um, separately, which is really quite interesting. Look at that. Look how hard. I mean, do you know how tiny this is? And um, somebody from Asia, preferably um, somewhere in China, actually sat here and um, carved these little scenes in here. Again, it's very hard to get a, a zoom on that. Um, but that is just really, really, really outrageous. Look at that. So there you go. And uh, actually, let me hold it up and uh, try to show you this. Look at that. And it's heavy. It has weight to it. And last but not least, we have these uh, two purses right here. And here's one that's made out of velvet, a velvet drawstring uh, pouch with uh, little frills on the ends. And uh, we have this um, almost like Native American uh, beaded design on it. Really, really uh, quite pretty. Probably from the 18... 80s to uh, about 1906 or so. It's very hard, by the way, to date these purses. Very, very hard since they were made for uh, quite a bit of time, um, all the way into the 20s. Um, it's almost impossible. Sometimes you can uh, date them by the framework that's made out of metal. If you open it up inside, it'll say something like German coin silver. It might have a country of origin stamped in there into the metal. But the drawstring ones are almost impossible to... Uh, date unless I mean, you know, you're an expert in textiles and uh, beading. So here we go. This one has this one's really pretty. This one has a metal um, Drawstring handle with little dangles. Look at that almost like little bells and let me pull the handle up and Try to like hold it up for you and it's not easy to do All right, so there we go. So this uh, this one is uh, shaped like an oval and you see the bottom has these beautiful dangling beads. And uh, there we go. And this is uh, held with a little metal um, drawstring. Very, very pretty. And the color is uh, mustard almost, if you look closely. And we have thousands of beads uh, going throughout it. Um, you can see again by my finger how tiny these beads are. Look at that. Really beautiful glass beads. And sometimes a lot of these beads um, that were uh, made in Austria or made in France, were actually um, purchased in Italy and made by Murano glassmakers. Um, that's also a very uh, interesting fact. So that's it. So we got all our antique purses, 
I hope uh, you found them uh, very, very pretty and you had a good time uh, looking at all of them, including um, our one with the provenance here and the photos. And uh, yeah, so um, hopefully like none of these will actually disintegrate. Um, that's the sad part of it all. I'm going to have to wrap all of these up in tissue paper and just put them away and keep them away from light because these will actually melt and disintegrate over time. All right, guys, so long. See you all soon.